Welcome to Fantastic Plastic, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Fantastic Plastic, I'll be presenting strategies and techniques for injection molded plastic part design using SolidWorks CAD software. I'm Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer with the Demonic Group. The Demonic Group is a full service product development consultancy located just outside Chicago, Illinois. In this installment of Fantastic Plastic, we'll be taking a look at the Master Model Workflow. The Master Model Workflow is a popular SOLIDWORKS modeling strategy that allows easy collaboration between industrial design and engineering teams. In the Master Model Workflow, the aesthetic shape of the parts or part is modeled in one part file, and then we're going to push that geometry into ch child parts where we will do the detail engineering design. Here we have a large four-piece uh, shroud that will go over a piece of equipment. I can't show you that, but I can show you the plastic itself. In the master model workflow, we're taking our parent multi-body part, which has all of the exterior uh, geometry, and then splitting it into the children's single body parts. Moving into SolidWorks, let's take a look at how this works. So here we see that large four-piece shroud, and if we take a look at our feature tree, we'll see that we have four individual bodies for each of the four plastic parts. We have a nice, well-organized feature tree here. We're a huge proponent of naming features uh, that allow, so that way people other than yourself working on the part can easily know what a particular feature does and identify features in the tree that create particular geometry in your part. So now that this uh, part has been modeled, we need to push the geometry into the child parts. And the way we do that at Demonic Group, and this is our preferred workflow, is the insert part feature. So I already have that in the tree, but that's easy to get to by going insert, part, selecting that, and then using the pop-up window to browse to the location of the parent part. So now that I've pushed that into the child part, we see we have those same four bodies but I'm actually only interested in one body. I'm going to do all the detailing on this one lower body in this part. So new in SOLIDWORKS 2015, they added the option to keep bodies instead of deleting bodies to the body delete tool. You'll note that the body delete tool also is now called body delete slash keep. So this is a great addition to this workflow because now all I have to do is just pick the body I'd like to keep, click OK, and SOLIDWORKS automatically deletes the other bodies in the part. If we see our solid bodies folder, just the one body. We're going to add our engineering detail features here in this part. I'm rolled up, but you can see the feature tree that actually creates that geometry. A huge benefit of the insert part technique is the ability to push other forms of SOLIDWORKS uh, constructing geometry and sketches into the child part. If we're to edit this feature, we'll see that we have the ability to bring in solid bodies, surface bodies, axes, planes, cosmetic threads, absorb sketches, etc., etc. None of the other uh, techniques for inserting parent into child part uh, allows for this level of uh, extra stuff. So we're a huge proponent of this just because of look how much extra stuff you can bring in. It's not just solid bodies or surface bodies, it's unabsorbed sketches, which is a huge uh, modeling help in my opinion. Uh, I'm bringing in this perimeter sketch, which we'll use later to work on the lip and groove of this part. So this is why we like using this, because of the ability to bring in all this extra SOLIDWORKS information. Now that I've brought my part in, I'm going to move on to locking the external references. This part is currently in context, as we see by the little arrow here. And this means that every time uh, I open the part, it will potentially reach out to the parent part and rebuild that feature tree to make sure we're getting the most recent geometry of the parent part. But this can be inefficient as we wait for SOLIDWORKS to rebuild. So what I'll do is right click, list external references, and then select lock all. This is going to lock the references, and that arrow is now has a little asterisk after it. And this means that SOLIDWORKS will no longer rebuild, but if there's any changes to the parent part, they will not be captured uh, in the child. If we did make a model change to the parent part, what we would do is right-click again, list external references, and we simply unlock all. Now we see that arrow. If I do want to jump back to the parent part, I can right-click, edit in context, and SOLIDWORKS automatically opens up or makes the parent part the active window, and I can make my model edits. Moving back to the inserted part, 
we'll just relock those references because I don't want to have SolidWorks rebuild. We'll click OK and now I can continue with the detailing of this one individual part. So here we see the benefit of insert part versus save bodies and that benefit is all of this extra SolidWorks information we can bring into our part versus uh, only bringing in the bodies using the save bodies command. Once we've brought our parent part in and deleted the extra bodies with the body keep tool, we'll use that lock all button to lock the external references, saving us rebuild times. Having access to the master model is a huge time saver. In this situation, I had to go in and add uh, some screw pockets, which were easily done by rolling above the shell feature and adding the screw pocket as a cut. The shell automatically generates the backside of the screw pocket. There was also some missing draft on this part that had tiny fillets on it. So if I didn't have access to the master model, I would have to use the delete face tool or some other techniques to get rid of the fillets so I could add the draft to the model. Having access to the master model, I open it up, I roll the feature tree above the fillet, I add the draft using the parting line draft tool, and save my changes. Now the new drafted face will be represented in the child part when I unlock the references and have the part update. I hope you enjoyed this week's SOLIDWORKS video tutorial presented by the Damani Group. Please subscribe to the Damani Group on YouTube by clicking our logo on the bottom right of the screen to stay up to date on new video releases. As well, click the SOLIDWORKS icon to be taken to our website where you can download the example SOLIDWORKS files used in this week's video. And finally, check out other great content by the Damani Group, Will It Fill It and Surfaces and Splines by clicking the video links on the left of the screen.